Hello and welcome to Choose News. I'm your host, Vincent Myers. Our top story today, it has come to light that Disney has been financially supporting the legislators behind what has come to be known as the Don't Say Gay Bill in Florida. The bill would prohibit the instruction and discussion of sexual orientation and gender identity in Florida classrooms. After receiving backlash from the LGBTQ community, Disney CEO Bob Shapak sent a company-wide email stating, I do not want anyone to mistake a lack of a statement for lack of support. I believe the best way for our company to bring about lasting change is through the inspiring content we produce. In response, Dana Terrace, creator of Disney's popular show, The Owl House, had this to say. We got an email telling us, in summary, Disney as a company is not gonna change, but here are a bunch of flowery and compassionate words to shut you up. Terrace is not the only one dissatisfied with Shapex's email, as employees at Pixar have sent a letter to the CEO voicing their frustrations. When discussing Pixar's push for more queer stories, the letter states, quote, Nearly every moment of overtly gay affection is cut at Disney's behest, regardless of when there is protest from both the creative teams and executive leadership at Pixar. Furthermore, the letter calls on Disney leadership to, quote, withdraw all financial support from the legislators behind the Don't Say Gay bill. Next, a story from Joe Moray on Microsoft's recent acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Thank you, Vincent. As of this past January, Microsoft made the largest company acquisition gaming has ever seen, buying out Activision Blizzard for a whopping $68.7 billion. This gave Microsoft full rights to popular franchises like Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, and Candy Crush. This purchase may have been Activision's saving grace considering they owe $18 million in settled harassment lawsuits to the California Department of Fair Employment due to the fact that female staff amongst Activision faced incessant discrimination and sexual harassment. Examples of this include promotions being passed along to male staff, since female staff might get pregnant. Coined amongst the office, cubicle crawls, men would drunkenly crawl under the desks of female co-workers and do unspeakable things. In the most graphic instance, while on a company trip, explicit photos of an unnamed woman were spread through the staff. Having her privacy invaded and neglected from higher-ups ultimately drove her to suicide. Business partners and gamers alike demanded answers, and Activision's response pleaded ignorance, claiming to encourage a healthy work environment. Fortunately, for the sake of the victims, there is a long paper trail of documented reports. In reality, the higher-ups not only protected those accused, but participated themselves. Even the overly friendly CEO, Bobby Kotek, left life-threatening voicemails to those who challenged his authority. With Activision Blizzard stuck in the eye of the storm, Microsoft took advantage of the agency's vulnerable state with the intents of restructuring the entire staff and taking these frat boys to school. Coming up after the break, local news with Jonathan Montgomery and Aaron Leonard. Make a left turn on Booyah Boulevard. Booyah, baby! Recalculating. Recalculating. No! Recalculating. You've got to be kidding me. I cannot waste this time right now. It sounds like you need a no BS GPS, or Nabiscopus for short. With Human Edge over technology, they pull up the most proficient routes. Yo, cut to this parking lot right here. Trust me, make a lot right here. Whew. Oh my god, you're a lifesaver. No, I'm not. This is a lifesaver. But you know what else I'm not? No BS. Welcome back to Choose News. The North Fork of Long Island is a hot spot for tourists. It seems like a million people pack into the tiny towns all the way out east for summer events and holidays. But the spot became a little less hot when some chilling news came out last year. Damon Rallis was a Southfold Town building permits examiner and leader of a local Boy Scout troop when his house was raided by the FBI on February 23, 2021. They had been tracking him for a year after seeing suspicious online activity connected to his IP address. And their suspicions were confirmed when they found child pornography on Rallis's phone. Not only that, but he had sent the graphic images to others. According to thepatch.com, Rallis was in a group on the messaging application Kick, where he would receive 
and share sexually explicit images of children under the username Dirty Daddy 431. Just a month later, another town official, David Corwin's house, was raided. In the raid, investigators found six computers containing child pornography. According to the Suffolk Times, one of the computers had a dark web browser open, and Corwin had bookmarked a website with a live chat feature, a site that he referred to as Pedo Chat. Both men were charged with possession of child pornography, with Rallis receiving an additional distribution charge. Rallis is awaiting trial, while David Corwin pled guilty in court on March 7th. Corwin will be sentenced on September 7th, and both are currently out on house arrest after posting bail. Now to Aaron in the field. The media festival here at Suffolk County Community College has been all the buzz within the radio and television production program. Here with us today, we have Carl Coulange, a TV professor here at Suffolk and the organizer of this year's media festival. Hello, Carl. How are Hello. you today? Hi. Thanks for having me here. Of course. So tell us a little bit more about what the media festival is. So the media festival is we gather uh, different pieces that students have worked on throughout the year, and we've made it into our own Oscars, if you want to call it that. Okay. So um, can you tell us some of the different categories that students submitted to this year? So this year we had the music video category, the PSA, the commercial, short film, radio feature, documentary, and comedy, I believe. Yeah. Awesome. So a lot of different talent within the community here at mm -hmm. Suffolk. Can you tell us what category you're most excited to see? Well, you know, my heart lies with the documentary. Uh, I have a background in documentary, and I'm always willing to learn about different topics. So for me personally, documentary is where, where, what I want to see. Awesome. So can you tell us where the media festival is going to be held and the date and time? So Thursday, April 28th, 6 p.m., ISEP Arts, room 115. We'll see you there. Thank you, Carl, so much for coming in to chat with us today. And we'll see you at the Media Festival in Islip Arts, Room 115, April 28th at 6 p.m. I'm Erin Leonard reporting for Choose News. Back to you in the studio. Thank you for tuning in with us today. And remember, choose wisely, choose news. news.